صارت الساعة 8 وربع نبلش. أنا اسمي الدكتور رشيد إبداع، ترجمة جسم المستشفى الملك المؤسس. يعتذر عن امبارح ما قدرناش يعني نعمل المحاضرة بوقتها. The purposes from this lecture is to connect you or to make a preaching between the basic science and the clinical science. So we choose a topic palpitation because it's very common complaints in outpatient clinics. We will start with a definition of palpitation, how to approach patients with this common complaint, and uh, we will go on over the treatment of palpitation. The palpitation is awareness of heartbeat. When you feel your heart is beating, this is a palpitation. So all of us someday experience, experienced palpitation. Palpitation can be very serious condition or which is commonly benign. It's very common complaint in cardiac clinic. It's about 25% of patients who present in the outpatient clinic. The chief complaint is palpitation. Mainly in young population. So how to approach this patient. Palpitation, firstly, in the outpatient clinic, we have to define the complaint. Is it really palpitation or something else? So we, we starting usually asking some question. This is history which is very important in medicine. You will be familiar with the importance of history, taking history, thorough history in the fourth year. So the, the history, taking history and physical examination is about 80% of diagnosis. Uh, so usually we ask in patient how is it frequent, uh, is it regular, or associated with other symptoms, for example, shortness of breath, uh, syncope, chest pain, uh, it's the first time, uh, it's triggering factor, for example, this is uh, during exam or during uh, emotion or at rest or exertional uh, palpitation. So we have a very wide differential diagnosis for palpitation. As I said, palpitation can be benign. For example, uh, sinus tachycardia is also a palpitation. When you are sitting in the exam, you experience palpitation. This is also palpitation, but it's benign palpitation. This is compensatory mechanism accelerating of your heartbeat. The first important differential diagnosis is arrhythmia. So the question is how to define arrhythmia. Arrhythmia is abnormal heart rate or heart rhythm. We know that the normal heart rate is between 60 to 100 per minute. This is the normal heart rate, usually 72. Any deviation below the 60, this is arrhythmia, this is bradycardia, it's also arrhythmia. And above 100, it's tachycardia, it's also arrhythmia. It's by definition. Arrhythmia can be also benign or serious. For example, sinus, sinus tachycardia, it's, it's benign condition. But ventricular tachycardia is a serious condition. Or atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response can cause stroke for the patient. Ventricular fibrillation can cause death. So arrhythmia is also, we have to 
to narrow the differential diagnosis. We will talk later about the arrhythmias. But, as I said, the, the, the first differential diagnosis of palpitation is arrhythmia, cardiac cause. The second important cause is psychogenic. It's also common. It's not necessarily to be a psychiatric patient, but sometimes we experience <coughs> bad emotion or an anxiety or difficult time, and all of that can cause palpitation. So, psychogenic. But we have firstly to exclude the serious condition, then we can say this can be psychogenic cause for palpitation. At the third place is drug. Usually we miss the, this differential diagnosis drug. Many drugs can cause palpitation. For example, patients with asthma or taking um, Ventolin, beta-1 agonist, can cause tachycardia, can cause palpitation. Uh, Digoxin can also cause palpitation. Many drugs can cause palpitation. Extracardic causes, for example, pulmonary causes, COPD, can cause also atrial tachycardia. Many, many, many mm, extracardic causes can cause palpitation. For example, thyroid disease, thyrotoxicosis can cause tachycardia, sinus tachycardia, or atrial fibrillation. Hypothyroidism can cause severe bradycardia. Uh, this is an example. For example, thiochromocytoma also can, can, can cause palpitation. This is extra cardiac causes. So, the differential diagnosis of arrhythmia, which is the most common cause of palpitation, as you see, it's why. We start usually with the most common. The most common cause of arrhythmia is serious arrhythmia is atrial fibrillation. I think you have a case, the, the case presentation which you have is about atrial fibrillation. It's very common arrhythmia in medicine. can be precipitated by cardiac causes or extra cardiac causes, for example, thyrotoxicosis. And sometimes it's idiopathic. We cannot identify any cause for atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation means there is an extra focus for heart. Usually you know the, the pacemaker of the heart is the sinoatrial node. This is the uh, normal place where the pulse generates. If there are extra foci in the atrium, and all of these start to generate impulses, this can cause atrial fibrillation. Usually it's very rapid rate. It's about 200 to 400 per minute. But not all of them reach the ventricle. We know the, the impulses after generated in the sinoatrial node must conduct through the atrium to the AV node. In the AV node occur some slowing for these impulses, delay and um, filtration of the, the, these impulses if it's very rapid. So in atrial fibrillation, these 400 per minute reach the, uh, the AV node, some of them is about 100, sometimes if it's very rapid, 140, reach the ventricle. So the heartbeat is about 140, but the atrial beat it's 400. This can cause uh, discomfort for the patient, can cause dizziness, can cause shortness of breath, especially if the patient already has cardiac diseases, for example, patient who has um, heart failure, 
this place are huge when you need the atrial kick. We know the, the cardiac cycle, we have systole and diastole. Diastole consists of primarily of two phases, passive filling and atrial and active atrial contraction. In the atrial fibrillation, this component, active atrial contraction, absent, which usually contribute about 25% for the diastole. For the patient with cardiac disease or with heart failure, they actually they need this 25%. For the normal person, it can go unnotably. But for cardiac patient, it's very important, this 25%. So they start to experience shocks of breath, uh, sometimes pulmonary edema. This is the mechanism or pathogenesis of atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is a disease of old ages, but can co also affect the young patient, especially who has familiar positions or take alcohol. Atrial fibrillation can cause stroke, thromboembolism, through the disturbance of a blood flow in the atrium. This makes the blood, blood stasis in the left atrium, and exactly in the left atrium appendage, and this leads to formation of a clot, and, and this clot can propagate through the systemic circulation to the brain and cause stroke. So this patient, how to treat this patient? We have two strategies. To decrease heart rate and to prevent stroke. This management in the chronic atrial fibrillation or in patients who cannot be converted to sinus rhythm. We have two categories of patients. Patients who, pre who present for first time with atrial fibrillation, we have totally different approach for this patient, and another patient who has chronically atrial fibrillation. For the first presentation, we try to convert the rhythm to sinus rhythm by giving, for example, synchronized cardioversion, Electrical or medical? Electrical by cardioversion, this is shock, or medically by giving medication which can convert the, um, the rhythm to sinus rhythm, for example, amiodarone, flicanide, and another antiarrhythmic drug. For chronic patient with atrial fibrillation, or this with enlarged left atrium because atrial fibrillation can cause enlargement of the left atrium. We have another strategy to decrease heart rate, to give the atrium chance for filling during the diastole. This is the purpose from the decreasing heart rate. And to prevent the stroke by giving anti Calculant. Between atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter is the atrial fibrillation, the presentation is irregular, irregular beat, but atrial flutter is regular rate, but the management is same. Okay, this is the difference between flutter and fibrillation. As you see, this is quite large list of Arrhythmia, we have bradycardia, also, also arrhythmia can cause syncope, loss of consciousness. We have sinus tachycardia, supraventricular tachycardia, which is also common, especially in healthy population and young patients, SVT, it's also very common. We have ventricular tachycardia and wolf parkinson white syndrome, it's actually a rare disease.
This slide shows the, the condition, cardiac condition, but not arrhythmic, which can cause palpitation or arrhythmia. So we have to think about this condition. In every patient who presents with palpitation, we should perform an echocardiography to rule out structural heart disease, cardiomyopathy, heart failure, valvular heart disease, for example, mitral valve prolapse, which is common in general populations, about 1% of general population, and uh, mitral valve prolapse syndrome, it's well-known syndrome associated with palpitation, especially in thin people, usually male, thin people, present with palpitation. So we have to perform echocardiography to rule out valvular heart disease. A patient who has pacemaker sometimes present with palpitation. This is well-known condition, pacemaker mediated tachycardia, pericarditis, and other condition. We have to keep in mind that there are other conditions not cardiac condition, can cause also palpitation or prati or tachycardia or arrhythmia. One of them is anemia. Anemia can cause tachycardia, sinus tachycardia. Electrolyte imbal imbalance, for example, hypokalemia or hyperkalemia can cause serious arrhythmias. For example, hyperkalemia can cause ventricular tachycardia and can lead to ventricular fibrillation and death. So we have to think about electrolytes, magnesium, and other electrolytes. Fever also can cause tachycardia, sinus tachycardia. Thyroid disease, hyper or hypothyroidism, can cause arrhythmia, bradyarrhythmia, or tachycardia. Hypovolemia, it's dehydration associated with tachycardia, phyochromocytoma, it's a disease of it's endocrine disease, and vasovagal syndrome, it's common uh, cause of syncope, loss of consciousness. It also can cause severe bradycardia. So other common causes of palpitation Usually we encounter these uh, causes every day in clinical practice. Alcohol, excessive alcohol or excessive caffeine, drugs, beta agonists, theophyllin, digoxin, can be also cocaine and excessive smoking. So also we have to ask patients about this uh, or lifestyle. So the first step, how to approach patients who present with palpitation is to rule out cardiac cause, to rule out arrhythmia. This is the, the, the first step. In the, the simple way how to exclude cardiac causes and arrhythmia is to do ECG tracing. So ECG should be performed for all patients who present with palpitation. Simple, it will lead ECG. Simple test, rub it, not expensive, and give a lot of information. ECG can show the heart rate, it's pretty, tacky, can give us a clue of the cardiac disease, for example, for ischemia, my previous myocardial infarction. Any patient who present with, for example, tachycardia or palpitation, and ECG shows myocardial infarction, least previous myocardial infarction, because the uh, acute myocardial infarction is present usually in the emergency department due to the severe pain, but old infarction should rise the, 
the alarming sign of serious arrhythmia. For example, ventricular tachycardia or atrial fibrillation. So it's important to, to look for the ischemic sign in the ECG. We have to look also about the left or right ventricular hypertrophy to exclude the possibility of, for example, bundle branch of lock, which is associated with left ventricular hypertrophy, or when the right ventricular hypertrophy present, we have to think about arrhythmia, which is associated with um, smokers, for example, atrial flutter, atrial fibrillation, multifocal atrial tachycardia. We have to look about the atrial enlargement for the possibility of atrial fibrillation, because atrial fibrillation has many forms, which of them, one of them is paroxysmal, which come and go, it's not permanent paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. But if the atrium, left atrium is enlarged, yeah, we can say it can be atrial fibrillation. We have to look also about any sign of atrioventricular block, which is also common, prolonged QT. You will be uh, more familiar with the ECG findings and diagnosis in the fourth year and sixth year of medicine. This is a tracing of ECG, show rapid heart rate. This is actually supraventricular tachycardia or atrial tachycardia, which is common in the practice. This ECG show another diagnosis. Usually this patient say we have very slow heart rate, but we, um, we, we feel that sometimes an extra beat, so ECG can show atrial, premature atrial tachycardia. It's just to know about the, the importance of ECG, which can give a diagnosis. Ventricular, premature ventricular. This is the. Okay. And this is well known uh, Wolf Parkinson White syndrome. It can be um, a serious condition, actually. It's not all Wolf Parkinson White syndrome is bad, but sometimes can be uh, life threatening. So, we have to seclude this condition. Sometimes ECG, or most of the time, ECG is normal. But patient insists that they have palpitation. So, the next step is try to monitor this the heartbeat by giving the patient a device which is called Holter, Holter monitor, as the, in the first picture, which, uh, portable device attached to the patient, and uh, record, trace the ECG 24 hour or 48 hour. It's continuous recording of heart beat, continuous. It's very difficult for us to dealing with Holter monitoring because we have to look through this tracing. It's, it's not an easy job. The other possibility is event monitor. It's easier for us and for the patient. It's also a portable device as in the um, picture number two. But we have um, called remote control or something. Patient can press the, the, the bottom when feel palpitation. So we can record only the event, not continuous recording of the ECG. And 
later patient present to the clinic and we can uh, record this abnormality and make a probable analysis for this ECG. In the summary, we have to think about cardiac cause of palpitation at the first place. We have to perform a thorough uh, history and physical examination for all patients. Not saying this is psychogenic. We have to exclude serious conditions. Then we can say, yeah, it could be psychogenic or something else. Sometimes 20% we cannot identify any cause for palpitation. The second step, after taking a history and physical examination, is to perform ECG in the clinic. It's a simple test, not expensive, and give the diagnosis sometimes immediately. The third place is to think, almost, as I said, about the heart. Because 80% of palpitation caused by cardiac causes. So, heart is important. The strategy is to record the ECG, the simple at rest, if we cannot catch the arrhythmia, so we have to give the patient halter or event recorder sometimes. Even in the event recorder, we cannot catch the, um, the arrhythmia. Uh, if the arrhythmia is very serious, we have we escalate in the uh, diagnosis. We making a loop recorder. It's a device implanted in the uh, the chest of the patient, and also uh, record the ECG in one year. It's continuous recording of ECG for one year, then we extract, extract the, the device and the, the, we have special software and the device analysis, make analysis of the rhythm and can give the diagnosis. Uh, we um, use this device only if we think the, the arrhythmia is dangerous or um, serious. So, this is the, the, the topic of palpitation. If you have any question, you can ask, because the, the second part of the um, lecture, I would like to make it as um, interaction. If you have any question, you can ask. Now, please. Yeah. The, uh, yes. How to diagnose Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome? The, the first sign is the short PR interval. This is not normal ECG. Here, this is the P wave. This is P wave. This reflects the impulse in the SA node. So normally, we need a time from the SA node to reach the ventricle. It's the conduction delay through the AV node. Usually this time lasts about 200 milliseconds, normal person. In Wolf-Parkinson syndrome, White syndrome, the impulse pass not through the AV node, but through the extra pathways. They have extra pathways connect atrium with ventricle. So the impulse propagate to the ventricle through these extra pathways, Kent pathway, called Kent pathway. So the time between B wave, this is B wave again, B wave. And QRS, this is complex called QRS, it's very short. 
It's about 100 millisecond. This means we have extra pathway, extra connection between atrium and ventricle. If you know, it should be the only connection between atrium and ventricle. And the other clue is the delta wave. The delta wave is here is not good demonstrated, but it's here I'm strike deflection, small deflection in the QRS. This is delta wave here, for example, delta wave. So Wolf Parkinson White syndrome is underestimated in the cardiac clinic. We have to think about Wolf Parkinson syndrome. Usually most of cases are benign. They don't need anything just to monitor the patient. But sometimes if these patients, about 10% of them can can have atrial fibrillation. This is the problem. When they get atrial fibrillation, so the this 20 hundred, as I said, or 40 hundred beat per minute can propagate through this extra connection to the ventricle and starting of ventricular tachycardia or fibrillation. This is very life-threatening condition, very serious condition. So. When the young patient present with atrial fibrillation, with rapid rate, we have to think about Wolf-Parkinson syndrome. Because the treatment is different. The treatment of atrial fibrillation with normal AV node is totally different of atrial fibrillation in the presence of Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. In the patient with normal conduction system, usually we give medication which slow the rate in the AV node. For example, beta blocker, uh, calcium channel blocker, amiodarone, digoxin. But in patients with Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, if we give medication to slow the conduction through the AV node, we, we make the arrhythmia worse and worse because more PET will go through the extra kent. A patient can die actually from the ventricular fibrillation. The management of Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is to give antiarrhythmics drugs which uh, plus one 1C, for example, procanamide or flicanide, or the safest drug for the arrhythmia is amiodarone, because amiodarone, the mechanism of action is can affect the AV node and the extra node, extra pathways, and the ventricle can slow the, the conduction over the atrium tissue, atrial tissue, and the ventricular tissue. So, if you get confused, give amiodarone. This is the... Or if the patient is uh, unstable, that means the patient has uh, hypotension or severe chest pain or uh, dizzy, cloudy level of consciousness, we have to give this shock. Synchronized, this is shock. Cardiovirgin. Okay, this is the indication for cardiovirgin, it's hemodynamically instability of the patient, regardless of the type of arrhythmia. Any patient present with unstable condition, regardless of the type of arrhythmia, we have to give this shock. If the patient is stable, we have time to think about the arrhythmia. In atrial fibrillation, it, if it's very rapid, young patient, we have to think about Wolf, Parkinson White syndrome, and the safest way is to give amiodarone, actually. Questions?
في حد عنده سؤال تفضل دكتور بالنسبه للكيس اللي اعطونا اياها هي هي رح تناقشها معنا ولا نقراها لحالنا ولا كيف؟ نو ذيس از كيس فور يو جاست تو تو نو ذات السيناريو اوف بالبيكيشن اتس اكشلي اتريال فيبريليشن ذا موست اوف ليكتشر واز اباوت اتريال فيبريليشن سو اف يو هاف اني كويستشن ذيس از ليستد ان ذا كيس اي كان انسر ذا كويستشنز So we answer the first questions, the difference, the, the difference between palpitation and arrhythmia. The type of arrhythmia can be ventricular, atrial, supraventricular. The causes of arrhythmias or cardiac, extracardiac. Medication, anxiety, drugs. Okay. I explained the pathogenesis of atrial fibrillation. It's multiple foci in the atrium which generate the pulse in rapid rate. Symptoms and signs of arrhythmia can be trivial. Patient can be present with nothing, asymptomatic completely, even with ventricular tachycardia. And can be ranged to uh, hemodynamically unstable patient with loss of consciousness, with severe hypotension, so it's wide range of presentation. The workup, as I said, the ECG, then simple labs, for example, CBC, complete blood count to exclude anemia, for example, Thyroid function test to exclude hypothyroidism or thyrotoxicosis. Chest X-ray to exclude pulmonary possible pulmonary causes for arrhythmia, for example, nodules, sign of emphysema, COPD. This is X-ray, pleural fusion. Uh, we have to perform echocardiography to exclude structural heart disease, valvular heart disease, pericardial effusion, ischemia. Then this is the simple test. If you have suspicion for, for example, other diagnosis, phycromocytoma or other causes, or for example, drug, we can measure the drug level in the blood. For example, in patients who take digoxin, we can measure the level of digoxin or thiophilin in the blood or other toxins. Then electrolytes. The most important electrolyte is potassium. Hypo or hyperkalemia can cause serious arrhythmias. Hypomagnesemia can cause also very serious condition called torsado D points. How to manage patient after establishment of the diagnosis? We can perform target therapy according the, to the underlying disease. If there is no underlying disease, we have to treat patient uh, or to treat the symptoms of arrhythmia by giving drugs which slow the heart rate, for example, in patient with uh, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter. Uh, sometimes we have the, the most common cause of atrial fibrillation actually is hypertension. Uh, this is well known. And uh, ischemic heart disease, COPD, but the most common cause is hypertension. And hypertension is a very common disease in the population. So it's atrial fibrillation also is very common. It's increased substantially with age. It's the patient or the people above 70 years, 75 years, 80% of them have atrial fibrillation. 
quite common can be dangerous so the management depends on the type of arrhythmia and the type of or the uh, cause of palpitation because not every palpitation is arrhythmia possible complication can happen due to this patient disease stroke this patient presents with atrial fibrillation stroke the most dangerous complication of atrial fibrillation is stroke so the the target of therapy to prevent stroke in patients with atrial fibrillation. We have a score system called CHAD score or CHAD VASC score. In the United States, they use CHAD score, it's the abbreviation for risk factor which can contribute for atrial fibrillation. C stands for congestive heart failure. H Hypertension, A, age, D, diabetes mellitus, child 2, score 2, uh, every um, condition gets one point. Number 2 reflects the presence of TIA or stroke, they get 2 score. Patient who present with one point or get one point can be managed with aspirin or with warfarin. If the, this is intermediate risk, if it has no zero risk factor, can manage only with aspirin. If the score is above two, we have to give warfarin. We know warfarin can be also dangerous drug, especially in elderly people who can injure themselves can cause serial, serious intracranial bleeding. So we use this scoring system, CHAD2. In the uh, Europe, they use more complicated uh, scoring system called chad VASC. They use more risk factors. So they try to cover more patient with warfarin to prevent stroke. For example, VASC state for peripheral vascular disease in the child score, the cut point of age is 75, they get two points. So every patient above 75 should be managed with warfarin. Under this age, get nothing. But in the Europe, child VASC, the say above 75 we give him two scores above 65 get one score one point so they try to to cover more patient with anticoagulant because stroke is has very bad condition another Complication of atrial fibrillation actually is heart failure. A rapid ventricular rate can cause tachycardia induced cardiomyopathy. It's a well known disease in the cardiology. It's heart failure caused by permanent tachycardia. So, the second complication is heart failure. And yeah, this is the most important complication of atrial fibrillation. This clot in the atrial can also propagate and passing not only to the brain, for example, can affect kidney, cause renal failure, can affect lower limb, causing lower limb ischemia. So, it's depend on the place where you go to the clot. But usually, it affects the brain. So sometimes we have to exclude before cardiovirgin the presence of clot in the left atrium. This achieved only by 
doing transesophageal echo. That's the transthoracic echo. It's because transthoracic echo detect only the gross thing in the heart. Any mass smaller than 0.5, we cannot see it in the transthoracic echo. So we have to perform transesophageal echo before performing cardioversion. If we don't have this facility, إذا ما كان في عندنا واحد يعرف يعمل transesophageal أو البشرة إجا بالليل ما فيش cardiologist. So we starting anticoagulant therapy, giving heparin and warfarin for four weeks, then performing cardioversion. This is the, for the patient who present for first time with atrial fibrillation. It's important trying to convert the rhythm to sinus. But it's not, not always successful especially if the patient has chronic or permanent atrial fibrillation. And the clue for chronicity is the enlargement of left atrium. If the left atrium is enlarged enough, so we avoid cardioversion and try to prevent stroke only. Heart rate management, decreasing the heart rate and giving prevention of the stroke. If the patient has small left atrium and the uh, atrial fibrillation is newly diagnosed, we try to return it to sinus. It's important. How we can by performing cardioversion or ablation? Because the place of these fossae is well known for the electrophysiologist or for the cardiologist. It's located in the, around the pulmonary vein. This fossae located around the pulmonary vein. So if we ablate this place, we have nahrik ablation, with temperature, high temperature, or with cold, and if you have another thing, how to ablation, we can treat or even eradicate the atrial fibrillation. طبعاً هاي البروسيجر يعني has risk عندها risk كثير ولذلك هي بس the patient اللي إحنا يعني the symptoms bothersome for the patient اللي مش قادرين يتحملوا symptoms of arrhythmia بنوديهم على ablation. أو البيشنت اللي عندهم زي ما حكيت هارت فيلير and they need this 25% of atrial kick فبنوديهم على الاتريال في على الابليشن حتى يستفيدوا من الاتريال كومبوننت in the cardiac cycle otherwise لأنه هذا very common disease ما بنقدرش كل واحد نوديه على الاتريال ابليشن اتريال فيبريليشن ابليشن على الرغم انه يعني برا لانه في سنترز اوف الكتروفيسيولوجي افيلابل فاني بيشنت وذ اتريال فيبريليشن افتر تراينج ا ميديكال ثيرابي اور كاردو فيرجن سيمبل كاردو فيرجن اور ميديكال كاردو فيرجن ميديكال كاردو فيرجن وي سيند ذيم فور ابليشن تو بريفنت ستروك اولسو اتس فيري اكسبنسيف بروسيجر بس اتس ورثي تو تو بريفنت ستروك عندنا احنا ما فيش الا مكان واحد ينعمل الاتريال فيبريليشن اعتقد المدينه الطبيه فبس نودي البيشنت يعني نكون فيري سيلكتيف الريسك ستراتيفيكيشن اوف بيشنت هو كان بي هو كان جيت بينيفيت فروم اتريال فيبريليشن بس اتفضل حنان Hello. Hello.
ابي اتصل علي رئيس القسم انا اليوم امتحان رابع على انه فشكلهم فقدوني لان انا مبرو... ما حكيتش لحد فاذا فيش حد عنده سؤال نقدر هي المحاضره كانت من الثمانيه وربع للتسعه صح؟ طيب احنا خلص الوقت بدي اشكركم ونشوفكم السنه الرابعه ان شاء الله. ثانك يو. سلام